Hey, g'day, Jake from Make Science Fun. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'm doing a bit of a, a what's inside episode. What's inside this um, jump starter pack? Now, I found this jump starter pack on the side of the road in a throw out pile, and the internal battery is not in very good shape. And so I've tried charging it. Now, you plug this into the wall outlet, and uh, that will slowly trickle charge this battery inside here. Um, and then when this battery is full, well, if your car battery is dead, uh, here's a pretty typical car battery, it's a lead acid battery. Now, lead acid batteries contain a lot of lead and sulfuric acid, so sulfuric acid's pretty dangerous. Um, but that lead is a very dense metal. Uh, it's also a very soft metal, but it's so dense that uh, car batteries are very, very heavy. Heavy, <laughs> very, very heavy. And, um, you know, the, the lead in them is actually worth a fair bit of money. Um, if you recycle this battery at the metal recyclers, you can probably get about $5 for it. And that's why um, battery shops are pretty keen for you to return um, these big batteries because it's a little bit of extra cash for them. If you don't look after a lead acid battery, then they do die fairly quickly. And the way to really neglect a lead acid battery is to leave it flat. Um, these batteries hate being discharged all the way. Some batteries, it doesn't matter. Lithium ion batteries, it doesn't seem to matter whether you discharge them all the way. But lead acid batteries don't actually like um, being discharged all the way. They have a much shorter life. Uh, you don't get as nearly as many cycles. It's much better to actually uh, maybe use up half the power or half the energy, half the store, and then recharge it. And so in a car, Basically, they're constantly being charged up by the alternator to keep them in a 100% uh, charged state. Now, they'll be used to start the, start the car, which will use up some, but then as soon as the car's running, then it charges up again. When you turn on your lights, it discharges, but the car's alternator will keep it, keep it topped up. If you've, if you've left your car lights on or something like that and your battery's dead or your, your light on overnight or something like that, well then you probably need to jump start your car. So one way is to actually get some jumper leads and put two cars together and um, connect the batteries. Or one way is to get this um, jump pack. The red terminal goes to the red, the black terminal goes to the black, and um, the battery from this jump pack actually um, transfers its energy to uh, this battery and you actually can hopefully then start the car. So let's have a look what's inside. Um, what's inside okay. this starter pack. So it's got some screws and I'll just undo the screws. Notice how, notice how thick these cables are. That's because a very high current flows through them. Okay, that's all the screws. Hey, take that off. Take that off. Oh, not everything comes apart. Not everything comes as part as easy as you'd like. Let me go get a bigger screwdriver. Let's have a look. Hey. Gotcha. All right. There's the handle. There's our battery. And okay, the leads go straight to those terminals. Um, it's a 20 amp hour battery, 12 volt. What size are you? Um, it's a 60. This one's a 60 amp hour battery, and so it's got three times the capacity of this. So this is really just to give a quick boost. Okay, just take that, that off there like that. Pop there and there. The first thing of interest is the there's a charging jack there. That's what the uh, lead goes in there like that. Um, but interestingly, there's a ceramic, um, I'm pretty sure it's a resistor, it is a resistor, in series, and so that will produce a voltage drop and produce heat. That just seems really strange to have that in there. That would mean that 
it probably needs a higher voltage than what that battery needs and to reduce the voltage it's actually just wasting it in producing heat very strange indeed strange 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 there's a bit of a micro controller board here what that would do is that it would um, sense the voltage of the battery and when the voltage of the battery reaches probably 14 volts um, that would actually then stop the main battery from being charged. Um, it also, it also, um, there's an on-off on switch and there's a few lights that show whether the battery's um, flat or being charged, that sort of thing. And then the one other thing that is there is just a simple fuse um, on the charging circuit. Um, that will limit limit the current flowing to the battery. Uh, and I guess it's, it's just a thin little piece of wire and if for some reason there's too much current going to the battery or the ba or current going from the battery to the charging circuit, that little blue, that little wire, there's a tiny little wire in that, there's a tiny little wire in that fuse that will blow. So I'm interested to see whether this battery is indeed dead or not. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. I might put it on a trickle charge just to test it out, but I'm pretty sure it's dead, but that's okay. Um, I'll put it with my other scrap batteries. Uh, it's a lead acid battery and I'll be able to get um, some money for it. Now, interestingly, if I look at this one, you can quite clearly, if you look at the top, if you look at the top of that battery, the gray, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six. That's because there's six cells and each lead acid battery produces, or each, le each lead acid cell produces two volts. And so to get a 12 volt car battery, you need to have six of those cells in series. Six times two equals your 12 volts, which is one of the downsides of a, of a lead acid car battery. And that is that if just one of those cells um, has an issue, because they're all in series, it sort of it wrecks the rest of the battery. So you can't actually, it, it kills the battery. So one small component, the weak link in the chain, and <coughs> kaput, uh, the battery's no good. And that's actually why it's called a battery. If it was just one cell, then it'd be called a cell. But because there's six cells, that, that's what actually makes it the battery. So that is, not a battery, that is actually a cell, uh, a 1.5 volt cell. Um, this is also not a battery, this is a 1.5 volt cell. Same voltage, but this one's got a lot more chemicals in it and so can store a lot more energy. It's a lot bigger, can store a lot more energy. Have a guess at what this is then. Did you say a cell? It's not a cell. This nine volt battery is actually a battery. And the reason it's a battery is that it's got six 1.5 volt cells in it, all in series, to produce the nine volts. Six times 1.5 is nine volts. So that's a battery and that's a cell. Hmm. You don't wanna muck around. These things can deliver a lot of current in a short time. Let me put my um, goggles on and uh, let's just have a look at something I've got. Just a uh, copper wire here, there's got a few strands in there, but I've isolated one of the strands. And so if I connect that to that, oh, holy sugar, Woo! Oh, sugar, look at that, it just, it's even welded itself to it. Don't do this at home. Whoa, look at that. That is a lot of current, poor. A lot of current coming through that battery. Ooh. Careful with batteries. Woo, easy to start a fire. Um, thanks for joining me today on um, what's inside a jump starter pack. No surprise, it's got a big battery. Um, the more newer jump starter ones are a lot smaller, a lot lighter, and that's because they don't have a lead acid battery in them, but they've got a lithium um, ion cell. Lith lithium batteries store a lot more energy in a lot smaller space. Anyway, thanks for joining me today, 
and I'll catch you again soon. I hope I'll make science fun. Bye for now. <laughs>